Hi, and welcome to another Witch Doctor's How To. Today we're going to show you another video in our series of how to take apart a brake caliper. Our one video already shows you how to do the rear. This one happens to be a front dual piston caliper. So we're going to show you how to take this apart. You may say, why do I have to ever take one of those apart? We powder coat these for you. Uh, we offer that as a service and we also offer chrome. So the one thing we, we ask you is that you send us everything apart. We don't do this service for you. We need them to come in bare. So we're just going to show you how to take that stuff apart. Number one, it's going to save you money. Number two, a lot of dealers won't do this for you. They're scared to do it. So we're going to show you how to do it. It's not that hard. So come on, we'll show you how to do this. A couple things you're going to need is I like to have a little screwdriver on hand. Also a dental pick. It has the curved end on it to hook the O-rings when we go to pull them out. The other thing we have is a T40 Torx head. It's not an Allen head, it's just, everybody calls it a star head, but it's actually a Torx head. That's going to be to take these four bolts out. These four bolts is what keeps the caliper each half together. So one thing I've already done, and, and these are really hard to take out, is I've already put this in a vise and I've loosened these up already, um, just because I wasn't going to show you that, but they're already a little bit loose so I can get them out. A couple parts on this caliper that you may not know. This is your bleeder screw. This right here is your bleeder screw. This is where the brake line hooks on to. Inside here are your pistons and on the front you have four pistons. You have two on this half and two on this half. And what you'll see is this, this parting line right here. The caliper actually is in two parts. A rear caliper is one piece. This is actually a two piece caliper. So when we take it apart it's going to come apart and you'll see how to do that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take these bolts out and then show you how to get the pistons out. Like I said, I've already loosened these up so that we didn't have to waste time showing you how to put it in a vise. Now one thing you may or may not know is these bolts are stainless steel bolts. And the one thing we offer for you in our powder coating is if you send us the bolts, we'll polish them for you. These bolts actually, if you have a Harbor Freight bench grinder or something with a buffing wheel on it, a cloth buffing wheel, you can polish these bolts up and they'll look just like chrome. So don't pay us to do it for you because we do it free on the powder coating service, but a lot of guys say they want these bolts chrome. Don't spend the money to get them chrome because all you got to do is polish them yourself. If you can't polish them yourself, send them to us and we'll do them for you for free. It only takes a second so that something will do for you if we're already chroming your caliper or powder coating it. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to take these bolts out. The one thing you want to be careful is there is a little O-ring in here. It won't fall out or anything, but you just have to know it's there. So you take those bolts out and you can see the caliper just comes right apart. It's a two halves, two pieces. Now the little o-ring I told you about is right here. You have to be careful, don't lose that. People don't know that's there. Just take your little dental pick and get that o-ring and take it right out and just set it down. Now the one thing you want to do is get yourself a piece of paper and draw this out. You know, you can put top, bottom, however you want to do it, left, right, whatever, write it so that you understand it. The one way I do it is I always say the bleeder side. So I say like the bleeder side front or the bleeder side rear and I draw it out. Because when we take these pistons out, you want to make sure you put them back in the same spot that they came out of. That's real important. And the one thing you can notice is they're different sizes. The one's big and the other small. So that's not hard, but you want to make sure you don't cross left and right. You want to keep everything right where it goes. And the same with the O-rings that are in here. If you don't, you could have problems down the road. And everybody's worried Brembo does not make a rebuild kit, and that's true. As far as I know, they do not make a rebuild kit for this. So that's very important. Don't screw this up. If you take your time and you do it right, you won't have any problems. Now the one thing you're going to say is how do we get the pistons out? pretty easy. You need to have an air compressor and I have a blow gun. What I like to use is a blow gun with the rubber tip. Reason being, when you put that in the caliper, 
you're going to put it in where the brake line goes. So when you put that in there, you want that to seal up nice and tight. So it'll push these out. Because what we're going to do, when we put air in there, that's going to act just like brake fluid. And these pistons are going to push out. Now, the one thing you want to do is make sure you wear some safety glasses because brake fluid can fly out. And you have to go kind of easy because these pistons will fly out with a lot of force. And if you don't, if you just hold it like this and do it, they'll shoot right across the garage and you don't want that to happen. So what we do is we kind of hold it down so that when the pistons come out, they hit the table. So I'll show you what you do. And like I say, if you just have some eye protection to keep that from, from splashing you. And one thing too, you put a rag, I usually just kind of wrap a rag around there. That way that'll help them from flying out. It'll just keep it from shooting out in case it gets a, you get a, lose the grip of it. So you're just going to put your air in there and you'll see it. And sometimes they come right out and sometimes they don't. Okay, that time it didn't. So we're going to try something a little different. And sometimes this can be hard. They, they don't want to come out. So what we're going to do is, if you see this little hole, that's the little, that's the little hole where the O-ring was that we took off on the other half. So I'm going to plug that with my thumb so that it doesn't leak air. I don't know if you heard that pop. That's a piston popping out. Okay, so see how the rag kept that from flying out? So that's your piston. Okay, that's as easy it is. Is it, or as hard as it is, it's actually pretty easy. You can see the top is dished down and the bottom's flat. So when you have your little drawing, make sure you set that out, that that one would go there. I just kind of wipe some of this fluid out so it doesn't spray you. Now the other piston's still stuck in there pretty hard. This is where it can get hard because right now, when you put air in, air's gonna come out of here. It's really hard to do that. So this is a little bit more tricky. The rear one is real easy to do. You want to give little short bursts because sometimes that'll help get it to come out. And this one's still stuck. So we're going to try putting this piston back in. And by the way, that's how you would put it back together. Just push that in there. So what we're going to try to do, since this one's not popping out, we're going to block this hole off. So we're going to hold that one down in there tight. You almost have to have another hand. We're going to hold that one down in there tight so that it can't come out and hopefully it'll push this other one out. So we'll see if it pops. There it goes. Did you hear that? And actually it shot across the table. So that one came out. Now you're going to say, how do we get this one out? That one should come out a little bit easier since we already had it out once. Okay, I just went over and got a pair of pliers. Sometimes if you get it where it comes up just a little bit, it's got a lot of fluid on it. It's real slippery. So I'm going to plug off both holes and put a rag in there so it doesn't go. But I got my finger, you can see I got my finger down in this hole, plug in that hole. Plugging that one off. Whoop, there it goes. You can see how hard that came out. It popped it right out and shot it on the floor. So that's why that rag over there helps to hold it so it doesn't come up and hit you in the face. So that's basically it. So you can see the sizes, big and small. So what we want to do next is down inside there is the O-ring. You can see there's a big one here, and at the very top right here is a small one. Everybody forgets that small one's in there. So you're gonna take your pick, 
And the small one's a little bit hard to get just because it's small, but there you go. You can see it pops right out. You get your pick, you hook it, and you pull it right out. Now, what I do is I take that piston and I just slide that O-ring on there, and that tells me that's the top one. The other thing you'll see when I get this other one out, just hook it and pull it right out. They're different sizes. You can see one's real thick and one's skinny. So you just want to remember when you put them back together, the thick one's on the bottom, towards the bottom. And that's why I put them on the piston that way. So I know those O-rings went to that piston. You're going to do the same thing with this one. There's the little one. There's the big one. I'm going to slide it on. And you're all set. That's all you really need to do on there. You're going to take your bleeder screw out. Because when you send them to us, like I say, you have to have it completely bare. So the last thing you're going to do to this is just put it in your, your bucket and brake clean. Some brake clean. Spray it off because you don't want to ship something in the mail or in the UPS with brake fluid. So just clean it off real good. You can put it in a Ziploc bag, sandwich bag, or something like that, and seal it up, and just send it to us that way. But that's all there is to that. It's very simple. That's how do you do that one half. So we'll set that aside. And on the other half, we're gonna do basically the same thing. Two pistons. We're going to put the air in this hole where the O-ring was because we don't have any, any fitting where the line was since the line was on the other half. We're going to put air in here. So it's, we're going to do the exact same thing. And we're going to pop them out. Again, I try to wrap a rag around there to kind of keep them from flying across the garage. Just put it in. I, you can hear that pop. You saw the fluid come out. And if you look, I'll take the rag off. Almost like a magic trick. Abracadabra. There's a piston. There's the other piston. You can see the fluid in there. That's why you want to wear the safety glasses. Because if those things blew out of there, if those pistons blew out of there, you'd be wearing a face full of fluid right now. So we'll pour some of that fluid out. And you got the exact same thing. A smaller piston and a bigger one. Two different sizes. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to hook that O-ring. That one goes on. That one goes on the small one. And make sure you be real careful when you take those out. I mean, I do them kind of fast, but make sure you be real careful. You don't poke into that O-ring. Make sure you go underneath it with the hook and pull it out. Because if you tear these, these aren't something you can run down to Lowe's and buy. They're special O-rings, and like I said in the beginning, I don't think. They make a rebuild kit, not that I've seen. Pull them out. And again, make sure you draw, you know, which one goes what. Um, you can put them in a little sandwich bag and take a marker and say this is on the half without the bleeder screw or this is on the half with the O-ring. You can, you know, write it however it makes sense to you so you know. So the same thing. You're basically done with that. Just rinse it out. Rinse it with some brake clean. You don't have to worry about getting it all clean. We just want it so it doesn't have fluid dripping. So that's that's the only thing, the reason we're doing that. Put it in a sandwich bag, send it to us. We'll send it and get it chromed or powder coated. That is how you disassemble a front dual or four piston calipers. If it was a dual caliper, you would do the other one the same way. Like on a hammer where you have two calipers, do it exactly the same way as what I just showed you here. It's not hard. I know you guys can do it.
Thanks for watching.